All right. Odyssey.com rewind. You missed anything. We opened up. We talked Michigan State briefly. Because I just don't care. I can't, I cannot lower the standard. I don't like watching them play. They could win Thursday. They could lose. I really don't care. Rico is willing to lower the bar so he can preserve enjoyment. It's an interesting psychological profile of fans, and maybe I'm nuts. We'll get to the Lions a little later because ESPN said something stupid, and I will come to the Lions' defense on this. But I, I want to just touch on two things. One, we're not going to make a topic of it now. We're going to bring up Michigan basketball later because I need to understand what the job even is. And I got a list of coaching candidates that ESPN says you should call. I don't even think half of these guys would answer the phone. So, because I, I, I feel like there are two... Ca- yeah, it's truth. But, um, obviously... Doug Hi, Link- it's the University of Michigan War Manual. I'd like to talk to you. <laughs> it's something. Uh, Doug McDaniel is transferred. Hopefully he goes somewhere that doesn't require books. And then you lost your best recruit for next year, a top... Th- <laughs> Doug McDaniel will be applying to Southern New Hampshire. That's right. To be professional. I'm not. (laughs) You don't need to be. You don't Don't need need to be. be. Uh, You had a top 30 recruit, and well, he gone too. So I I don't know what to tell you. Um, But we'll get to the coaching angle of it later. (laughs) How do you spell (laughs) W-C-C-C? You just did, Doug. Congrats. (laughs) So with that in mind... (laughs) W-C-C-C. Cheap trick. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's be professional. Did you hear the piece of the update about the NCAA tournament? I did. So does that validate what I said to start the show, is that the relationship with March Madness, it's totally changed. It's totally different. Kenny brought this up. Like, there's no magic to it. I love March Madness. Even now, like the only juice I have, you know, we'll be in Vegas for it and the betting on it and 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 the social aspect. But look what I just said. It wasn't wasn't brackets. It wasn't the love of the game. Seven point six billion dollars will be wagered on U.S. sports books for the NCAA tournament. That is double the amount that the Super Bowl generates. I really, like, when we break it down, Rico, you and I have had the conversation. I don't like the decisions that are being made, but I understand why they're being made, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. The networks know what this is. They want a better TV product. They think putting more teams in or breaking away from the NCAA will get a better TV deal. And let's face it, $7.6 billion is going through that window. And I got bad news for for, for you, the people. 7.6 7.6 ain't coming back out. So I just wonder, is the only redeeming quality of the NCAA tournament as it currently stands or moving forward, that it is, it's become a betting event, that it really has nothing to do with the reasons we used to love it. Mm-hmm. I used to be able to watch games left and right with no bet. Used to be able to watch a game like, like St. Peter's, Kentucky. That, that's riveting sports television. Now they're trying to even take that away. It was Styles making the fight. Like, oh, my God, this is a great defensive team. This team shoots a lot of threes. Which one will win out? Yes. To answer your question, it is changing. It is about betting. The reason being, unlike the Super Bowl, it's one game. This one, you can go all in, and if your bet loses, guess what? There's another game coming up in 10 minutes. Let's put some money on that. We're going to just keep betting and betting until we finally get a couple of winners and feel good about ourselves. Now, Vegas is going to make the most money because they're going to take all most of your money. But you get the opportunity to look right and feel right because you picked that 14 to upset that three. But it used to be the bracket. Remember how good it felt when you filled out a bracket oh, yeah. years ago? Oh, I had this, I had that. And then you had bracket guy telling you all the updates every time. Oh, I called that upset. Where is he? Hold on. That's, I mean, that's Stoney. I don't remember the last time somebody has put a bracket in front of me. I don't even know if the office has a bracket pool. 
Who the hell plays brackets? I had a couple of buddies of mine. They sent me a bracket saying, hey, you want to join the bracket? But it's like. Nah. Okay. I mean, but the thing is, with brackets, you could be done in a day and your bracket's busted and now what? Whereas gambling, individual games, okay, I picked this game and they lost. All right, let me go pick another game. Let me let pick me, another game. Let that's me ask Rico, look, you talk about, oh, next game in 10 minutes. No, I can go the second half to the game that's, oh, I'm done with that one. The second half of the next game well, is right there. On the second half of yeah. this game. I, I thought this team was going to win, but obviously not. See, I'm kind of wondering something, and I mean, I don't know the wisdom of doing this topic, but whatever, it doesn't matter. If I get in trouble, who cares? Like, the whole idea of it is there's a cost to the the sports betting. And it, I, I'm not, this isn't some Greenpeace routine. Like, hey, man, you're, you're an adult. You decide to ruin your life with gambling, that's on you. The point I'm making is there's a cost to your fandom. And I do wonder if we're starting to see a little bit of a change with people and the college game becomes a testing ground. See, the pros we've always accepted as just mercenaries for hire. There was never any nostalgia to. It. You know, those these players don't like living in the cities they live in. They take the money. But collegiately speaking, everything about college football and college hoops, think about it, Rico, rivalries. The geographical relevance of it. David versus Goliath. The only thing that is left that they haven't ruined, the networks, is the betting. But it comes at the cost of what the event really is about. Because now we see, what, Friday we did that topic. These networks know that Emmert signed a bad deal. They're going to go, we're going to break away from the NCAA. Mm -hmm. F the little guy. Hell, a lot of, like Moorhead State playing Illinois coming up on Friday. Morehead State may not have a program if these lawsuits go the wrong way because these could be eight-figure penalties, buyouts to every team. I kind of right. just wonder if this if this is the collateral damage of it all. Like, we'll, oh, you'll always like the tourney, but it is different now. It feels different. The NIL has changed the way it feels. Look at what's going on with the NIT, and I'm not doing a bleeding heart for it. I'm saying these schools, some of them, I know factually one of them, they didn't turn down the NIT bid. They didn't have enough players to play because the minute their season ended last week, six players disappeared off campus. So it's not what Tom Crean said, and you guys should just be lucky to play basketball. I think there's an element of it, but like, look at St. John's. Patino already said, I got to bring in 10 new players this year. They lost, didn't make the NCAA tournament. You can't even locate your team. Some of these dudes left campus. Some of these dudes already have a deal brokered, even though they're not supposed to. It's, Or, or am I the only one who, who views it this way? No. No, no, no. I think the NIT is going to go the way of bye-bye, which is going to be the reason why they say, well, we need to expand the tournament because no, nobody don't. wants to play in the NIT. But if St. John's was actually in the tournament, all 10 of those guys are going to stick around for another week or two to see how far you could go. So I do think that... Yeah, this is – I wonder if this is going to be the the be the genesis of the conference tournament – I mean, the uh, NCAA tournament getting expanded. That the N – NIT, you're begging people now. To, when, when you're celebrating the fact that the Minnesota Golden Gophers said yes, you got problems. So let me ask you guys in listener land the question this way. How much of your fandom has been affected by the betting? Meaning, the enjoyment is the betting, or the interest level you show is based on not the team's playing, but whether you've placed a bet on it. I mean, I do think inherently, like the fact that I do cash the ticket and we cover the games the way we cover them, that's what I'm watching. I admit this. This isn't me being above or below anybody. It's just, Rico, when we break games down and we find games we're going to play, that's the game I'm watching. It has nothing to do with the matchup. It has nothing to do with quality. It's the bet. It's it's the NCAA tournament feels like that's what it's gotten to. It used to be you could give me UT Chattanooga with Johnny Davis at the O Arena, and are they going to pull an upset? Shout out the moccasins. But, like, <laughs> now I only care about the games I'm playing. It doesn't matter. You could be like, well, don't you want to watch UConn just flex on, you know, Longwood? No. Not, yeah, not unless is, I've 
Laying the 26 and a half, I don't care. See, this is where I'm different because I still will stay up and watch yeah. those games. But then again, you and David told me uh, college hoops doesn't start until when, David? January at yeah, least. Yeah, January. Yeah. So, yeah, in November, yeah, I'm driving to Indy to watch the Champions Classic because, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm that guy. No, I'll but it's, it. it's also your favorite. Like, I totally understand it. Like, college football, it's largely become the same thing. Like, Ohio State, Notre Dame at night, yeah, that still got me, regardless of a wager. Did I bet on the game? I did. I pushed. The point is... Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the point is, no, I'm laughing th- because I literally had to pull over at a sports bar because I'm like, I can't listen to this game on the radio. I got to find a sports bar on the way home. <laughs> but we're still we're losing part of that. I mean, think about this is like, I know the Pistons are bad, but the NBA as a whole, what person driving around right now, two kids and a mortgage is settling in for an NBA game on a Thursday night that doesn't involve their team unless they bet on it. No, you're right, but I'd say, ooh, Mike, I, I think you've hit an iceberg. There's so much to this topic that I can tell it resonates with the people. <laughs> hey, do you think you could punch a giraffe? Two four eight. <laughs> no, I, I think what it is is it's because you have a lot of players going to the G League that you don't know about that means the teams current teams in the NCAA have players that you don't know about and then they filter to the NBA and you you don't know about them there so you lose interest where at least like college football you get to know somebody on a team and even if they transfer to another team they're there for 3 years so you know Michael Penix from his days at Indiana and now you know him from his days at Washington but I saw Thompson. You don't know who he is. You just know that the Pistons drafted him. So take it a step further. College football and basketball, here's the question. You guys mull it over. Is the only thing that's left for these two sports gambling? Everything else has been eroded. Everything else has been irreparably damaged. Then moving forward, if you're the 99%, not the 1% hardcore nutcase cultist, the only thing left for college sports right now is the bet. 